Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all of Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Madam Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you. And a merry. Now, good Madam Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask for some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. Yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Ericles rarely, or a part <coughs> of Terra Cadden. <clears throat> the raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phibus Carr shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish things. <laughs> this was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Madam Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> <laughs> You may play in a mask and speak as small as you will. I have a, I have a beard coming. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe, too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. <clears throat> Disney. Disney. Oh, Pyramus, lover dear, thy Thisbe dear, and lady dear. <laughs> no. You must play Pyramus and flute you Fisby. Well, proceed. Robin Starbling, the tailor. There, Madam Quince. Robin Starbling, you must play Fisby's mother. Yes. Tom Snow, the tinker. Here, Madam Quince. You, Pyramus's father. Myself, Fisby's father. Snug, the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here is the play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me for I'm slow of study. Why, you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too. I'll roar that I'll do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terrible that you would fright the ladies that they would treat. And that were enough to hang us all. I, that would hang us every us, every mother's son. But, I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and for any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman-like man, therefore you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? You will play bareface, but masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. 
There we will rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we shall be dogs of company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of property such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains. Be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough. Hold or cut bowstrings. <laughs>